military is searching for the founder of a whistleblower website. His name is Julian Assange. And according to the website, thedailybeast.com, he is the target of an investigation by the Department of Defense. WikiLeaks is the site that caused controversy when it released Pentagon video of an American airstrike in Iraq back in 2007. The military reports the airstrike killed at least nine militants along with two Reuters journalists. A former associate describes Assange as, quote, nomadic and a weird guy. Well, weird or no, is there a hunt really for the founder of WikiLeaks? What about that trillion dollar mineral find in Afghanistan? And then there's the sale of Blackwater. A whole lot of stories to catch up on with our next guest, Jeremy Scahill, contributor and blogger at The Nation magazine, as well as the author of the book Blackwater. Jeremy, welcome back. Thanks. To, thanks. Um, let's quickly clarify Fox version of what happened in that hit was that militants and two reporters were killed. It's not exactly that way. No. Well, I mean, the, the, the big story at the time, when, when eventually it was admitted, uh, was that two Reuters journalists were killed. And in fact, the military's own after-action report indicated that there was perhaps a targeting of the journalists because one, one military official says that the camera, the fact that a Reuters cameraman was pointing the camera at U.S. forces, was interpreted as a sort of menacing action. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a much deeper investigation that needs to happen there. And, and as far as the people being militants go, uh, Rick Rowley, who's been on this show talking about this, was there the day after this happened and talked to people. And by all accounts, uh, it seems as though this was a community of refugees that sort of spontaneously were protesting because journalists were there saying, give us basic goods and supplies. All right, so having corrected that Fox report, what's the significance of this supposed hunt for the WikiLeaks founder? Is it important to somebody like you who relies on sometimes secret sources? Well, I mean, I've reported on WikiLeaks documents in the past, and I, of course, use my own series of, of uh, confidential sources who at times give me documents that are very sensitive in nature. So I, I think that WikiLeaks is deserving of a lot of support from people around the world because what they're doing is providing a public service by revealing what amount to war crimes or other uh, uh, malfeasance on the part of the government. One of their recent documents had to do with a, a CIA red cell report that showed that the CIA was involved with uh, kind of propaganda operations in Western European allies of the United States trying to shore up support uh, for the U.S. war in Afghanistan. Uh, so certainly this is an organization that deserves support. Uh, Julian Assange, the founder of WikiLeaks, um, has not really been seen recently, although, although he has been tweeting. He was supposed to appear here at a conference, and our understanding is that Daniel Ellsberg, the famed whistleblower of Pentagon paper fame, um, advised him not to come here. So it's being portrayed as a hunt for him, um, but it seems like he's been in this position before, though not a, in this kind of a high profile a way. And, and at issue here, Laura, as you indicated, 260,000 uh, diplomatic cables are said to have been passed on to WikiLeaks by Bradley Manning, this Army intelligence specialist who claims uh, to have given over uh, this WikiLeaks collateral murder video. If that's true, um, and I've talked to people within the government, it will send shockwaves uh, through, through the power infrastructure of this country because he says that they show almost criminal dealings. Um, and I think a lot of diplomats around the world are very, very nervous. So certainly they're going to want to, at a minimum, talk to Julian Assange. Did he denies the, he has them, by the way. Yeah. Did the sale of Blackwater um, cost shockwaves anywhere? <laughs> well, I, I, was, uh, I was speaking recently at an event, and I was suggesting that if everyone in the audience uh, just pitched in $10 million, <laughs> we could all buy our own private army and show them what a disarmament movement looked like. Um, it, it's only caused shockwaves in the sense that um, Blackwater has been involved with some of the most sensitive, lethal action on behalf of both the Bush and Ad Obama administrations. Uh, and, and they have divisions of the company that are highly classified in terms of their operations, what, one division of it called XPG Select, which does a lot of their so called OGA work, other government agencies, CIA, JSOC. Um, what's going to happen to those operations? That's what's unclear right now. Uh, if I were to call it right now, I would say that Eric Prince is trying to sell it very quickly. Um, there are rumors that he may be the target of an investigation. Five of his top deputies were recently indicted on felony conspiracy charges involving arms smuggling and lying to federal agents. So um, if you're on the market for a private army, you probably could buy cheap and buy fast if you're interested. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll think about that. Um, what about the story that you've been following very closely about Bagram and the role it's coming to play? Is it, as some are saying, Obama's Guantanamo? Right. Well, let's let's remember that the Bagram prison has has been in play almost from the beginning of the, the U.S. Uh, occupation and invasion of Afghanistan. Um, uh, under the Obama administration, there's been a lot of rhetoric about trying to open it up a bit for the International Committee of the Red Cross to come in. And that has happened more under Obama than it did under Bush in terms of the general population. But what we understand is that the Joint Special Operations Command, the elite special forces of the U.S. military, in conjunction with the Defense Intelligence Agency, have been running a secret 
secret prison and, and interrogation facility within Bagram that's been uh, termed the Black Jail. In um, Afghanistan. In Afghanistan, this is. Um, and, and what uh, recently has come out is that the administration is considering, they haven't approved it yet, but is considering a plan to continue to use Bagram after it's officially handed over to the Afghan government um, in January of 2011. And the point of it would be to, to interrogate and detain so-called third country nationals, people that are not from the United States and not from Afghanistan. So that raises this, the prospect then of bringing people in from Somalia or Yemen or Pakistan to hold them in a, in a manner that's consistent with how they've been held at Guantanamo. In other words, an accountability and law-free zone. And the, co the courts in this country so far have said they have no legal recourse in these courts. Right. I mean, the, 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 one of the unfortunate realities of the of the legal uh, situation right now in the United States is that uh, almost down to the letter, uh, the courts have thrown out or ruled against cases brought by um, people that are imprisoned uh, unlawfully in the in the. Uh, view of their lawyers, denied them habeas corpus, denied them access to U.S. courts, and it's become a political issue. I mean, you see how the, the Republicans drove this home and actually got Obama to back up, President Obama, to back off of earlier commitments to trying these individuals in civilian courts. Uh, and, and it really boiled down to politics, not national security, because everyone who knows anything about this knows that the legal system in the United States is perfectly capable of handling terrorism trials. It's happened throughout history. Timothy McVeigh, Sheikh Omar Abdel Rahman. Talk about politics for a minute. Is it politics, perhaps, that put this lead story on the front page of the New York Times as we're speaking about the discovery of a trillion dollars worth of potential mineral wealth right. in Afghanistan? Well, both the U.S. and the Soviet Union have known for decades uh, that Afghanistan was tremendously flush with uh, with uh, mineral resources. Um, I don't know that the, the, the level of a trillion dollars, as we read today in the New York Times, has necessarily been the number on the table. It's an incredible number. What I found fascinating about this is that you can go back years. In fact, in the Times piece, they, they say that these are documents dating back to the Soviet occupation that initially led U.S. geologists and others to, uh, to this quote-unquote discovery of the, of the minerals. What I find fascinating, though, is that the Times chooses to get a quote from that expert in geological resources, uh, General David Petraeus, who, of course, is very close to Dick Cheney. There's been rumors that, that Cheney wants him to run for president someday. Uh, it, it just shows that the United States military is deeply involved with the issue of natural resources in Afghanistan. It's going to provide a lot of fuel for people who said from the beginning it was always about natural resources in Afghanistan as well. And there's been a lot of pushback on that. Uh, this adds credence to that view that Afghanistan, like Iraq, also has as a centerpiece uh, natural resources that the U.S. wants to control in some way, or to have a, a reason to say Afghanistan can pay for uh, its own reconstruction going forward the way Wolfowitz and others said about Iraq and oil. Do you think we're going to see a cutoff of relations eventually with Hamid Karzai? I mean, the word is he is interested in a private deal with the Taliban. I, I think at this point, Karzai, even though there is uh, the public face of disagreement sometime, remains very much, much the U.S. man. I mean, the, the U.S. lets him off the leash far enough to uh, say things that are for domestic political consumption. You know, I think I'll just join the Taliban, things like that. I mean, the, the U.S. is backing a corrupt uh, regime of war criminals, warlords, thugs, and drug dealers in Afghanistan. Karzai is basically like the, the mayor of Kabul. I, I, I think that um, the United States at this point has no choice but to uh, engage with Hamid Karzai because of the bad U.S. policy in Afghanistan. If we radically change the policy, opened up a much broader dialogue with the various resistance forces there, then you'd start to see a shift in, in uh, action on the ground. You'd see much less attacks against the U.S. The Kandahar offensive, still up in the air, uh, could prove to be an incredibly deadly moment, particularly for Afghan civilians, but also for the U.S. military. Now you're going to be covering it in your blog at The Nation magazine and inside the magazine itself. People can find links at our website, grittv.org. Jeremy Scahill, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me.